You know, I find it very interesting how Apple completely upgraded the iPhone 15 while still making it one of the most boring phones ever. Now, boring might be a harsh term, and you guys more than likely perceive the word as a bad connotation, but when I say that the iPhone 15 is boring, I'm simply saying that it's a phone where you know what you're getting. Base model iPhones in general have gotten to a point where they don't have anything extremely special to offer in terms of features, but in hindsight, this is a good thing since most people want a phone that just works. Most people don't really care about all the fancy tricks a phone like the Galaxy or Pixel can do. You want a phone that has good software, a good battery, and a solid experience all around. And that's why I would easily recommend the iPhone 15 to anyone who just wants a good phone and doesn't want to spend over a thousand bucks. With the iPhone 15, you have the best social media integration, your camera is top tier, the software is top tier, and you have a good build quality with nice color options. What more would you really need in a phone? And just like any other phone in the market, the iPhone 15 is not perfect. It has an outdated 60 hertz display, the charging speeds could be faster, and it could stay up to date on features. But personally, I don't think that these problems are strong enough to say that the iPhone 15 is a bad phone. That's why in this video, I wanted to show you guys my very good, yet boring experience with the iPhone 15 to show you guys how it holds up after six months of use. Now, if you didn't know, just like you guys, I'm someone who has a passion for technology. And I know that there are many of you guys that would like to incorporate this passion into a full-time career. And if you're interested in starting a career in computer science, then I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University. Now, SNHU has one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degree offerings in the country. And I wanna to talk to you about their computer science degree. In this program, you'll gain the skills that you need to enter one of the nation's fastest growing fields. You'll learn very popular languages such as Python, Java, and C++, further expand your toolbox with experience in full stack development, and can also integrate using JavaScript, NoSQL, and Amazon Web Services. You'll also learn agile software methodologies and develop a security mindset that will help you understand some of the biggest challenges in this current industry. SNHU also provides cloud-based virtual environments in some courses to give you access to the technology that you need for your degree. SNHU is also radically affordable. Their online tuition rates are some of the lowest in the nation, and you can also go to snhu.edu slash Nassim, which is also linked in my description and comment section of today's video. And from there, you can see the current average annual salary for a developer and request free information about the program. And when you do request information, a real person will hop on the call and discuss how the program can ultimately benefit you. In the future, there will be two categories of jobs, people who tell computers what to do and people who are told by computers what to do. Which one will you be? Now looking at the battery, the iPhone 15 handled everything extremely well. I was able to get pretty heavy usage out of it since I shoot videos with my iPhones. And other than shooting videos, I'm usually checking up on my Instagram and TikTok analytics, watching YouTube videos, scrolling through Twitter, and checking up on emails throughout the day. I never had to use power saving mode since the battery was able to last me all day with no problem. And as long as I got up to six hours of screen time, I basically could use any power heavy app that I wanted. And I was very comfortable doing whatever needed to be done on this phone because I was always pretty sure that I was gonna last till the end of the day. On a daily basis, I'm getting five to seven hours of screen time a day, ending my days on a very low percentage, but still never feeling like I needed to cut corners to extend the battery. Charging the 15 had little to no problem since I would mostly charge it overnight. There were a few times where I did forget to charge it at night, so I charged it while I was getting ready for the day and it was always on 80 to 100%. One of the best things related to the battery is that the iPhone 15 has a USB-C port, and this came in extremely clutch since I am now able to use one charger for all my devices. My Nintendo Switch, my laptop, my PS5 controller, AirPods case, and many more all having the same charger was the best whenever I was in another city. But besides the convenience of USB-C, the iPhone 15's battery is damn near the exact same as my 15 Pro, making that $800 price tag even more convincing. So now that we've taken a look at the battery and how it's been holding up after six months, Let's take a look at the design and build quality. Now, out of every phone in the market, the base iPhone 15s are some of the best in terms of look and feel. The arch smooth curves complemented with a boxy frame, and I personally think that this is the best in terms of aesthetic. And my favorite part is that it has the matte back that has been great at dealing with fingerprints, and it also has matte sides that are also great at deflecting fingerprints. It was also very easy to clean whenever I spill or drop my phone in something dirty, and I really wish that every phone was this practical for everyday use. Now, looking at weight, 
The iPhone 15 feels much lighter than it looks. Not only is it lighter than the pretty heavy iPhone 15 Plus, but it's also lighter than the smaller iPhone 15 Pro, which definitely adds to its comfortable feel. Holding it was very easy, watching YouTube videos in landscape mode was cool, and holding it vertically felt even better. And overall, the iPhone 15's aesthetic has matched the more pricier phones. The dynamic island notch was a nice touch, but other than that, it looks pretty much the same as the previous Pro model iPhones. And yes, this is nice, but I would like to see Apple push the boundaries even further and really go towards more innovation. Now looking at display, the iPhone 15 has been holding up very well, and in terms of resolution, can easily go toe to toe with the best phones in the game. The only problem that I have is that it has a 60 hertz refresh rate, which basically means that the scrolling feels more choppy than the 15 Pro or Pro Max. And I know a lot of people don't really have a problem with 60 hertz, but I always feel like it's my job to say it because 120 hertz is on most phones on the smartphone market, and this is a pretty expensive phone. The 15 has a ceramic shield display. Yes, it is supposed to be more crack resistant, but Apple has been having much more problems with scratch resistance. The premium look is the best attribute that this display has. The colors pop. The smoothness was apparent, and like most iPhones, it was visually stunning. The brightness also has improved from last year's iPhone 14. Whenever you're outside, the iPhone 15 can reach up to 2,000 nits of peak brightness. And the biggest thing that I was able to take away was the fact that the screen was still able to pop as much as if I were inside the house, giving its premium display even more continuity. Face ID is still holding up very well, and I think that it's pretty confirmed that the iPhone has always had the best facial recognition in the game, and 2024 is just another year of Apple dominating in this category. And now the last thing that I wanted to touch on when it comes to the display was just how good it looks when watching content, movies, and videos on social media. The resolution has never disappointed me in the slightest, and I'm glad that the very big display was able to enhance the experience. Now moving on to camera, the iPhone 15 has pretty much kept up the same consistency over the past six months and I like it. The camera software continues to push the envelope and make my photos look as realistic as possible. The selfies were top tier, different objects in different environments were able to flourish, and I'm still very happy that the iPhone 15 is at 48 megapixels. Zoom photos are top notch as well. There aren't that many zoom modes to choose from, but you can always go digital zoom, which works just fine if you parked your car and you need to see a sign from far away. Selfies on the 15 were among the best in the smartphone market. I love how it handles my skin tone. I love how it looks realistic while adjusting little details. And I still believe that I have yet to find a phone in this price range that takes better selfies. Videos on the 15 are easily the best in this price range. The autofocus, the many different modes, impressive stabilization, and quality was very consistent, which made me want to shoot videos on it. You can shoot videos up to 4K, and you can also shoot up to 60 frames per second. You can go cinematic mode, slow mo and editing the videos was just as impressive. The stabilization was solid, pans were smooth along with brightness and contrast, and the video camera was overall top tier. And all right, you guys, these are my final thoughts on the iPhone 15 after six months of use. It's a very boring phone, but at the end of the day, it will get the job done. And after this video, I've come to realize that boring isn't always a bad thing. Peace.